Hello everybody, how are you all doing? I hope you are doing well. Here I have another exclusive video for you guys. And of course, I am making this video in response to a question. We have a really interesting question about curtain walls. Now, we didn't cover curtain walls in this course. However, uh, the principles that were taught in the custom door slash window assembly uh, lesson a lot of those principles will apply to curtain walls as well. So whenever you feel like messing with curtain walls, you're going to find that a lot of those uh, things are pretty similar or very similar. And just a few things are different. All right. So in my thing here, I have a curtain wall that was drawn. And uh, this is, I mean, if you go here, you have it right there. And if you go into your style browser, you also have a bunch of different curtain wall styles and so on and so forth. But let's take a look at what Mohammed wanted. So it looks like he's trying to create something here. Uh, this is a portion of a commercial building where you have this big glass panel with five vertical, let's call it bays. And then you have this door taking up this portion of maybe two of these bays. Uh, let's talk about dimensions. Let's make the total height of this thing to be 13 feet. And let's make the height of the door to be 10 feet, you know, whatever. And we'll make the width of each bay to be two feet wide, okay? So that's what we're gonna be working with. And so I'm gonna probably pull this off to the side or something. I don't know where to put this. I'll put it up here so I can have it to look at. All right, so here I have a curtain wall and this is what came in when I drew the first piece. And you can see that the dimensions are super tall. So what we can do is to make our height 13 feet because we know that's what we want. And in terms of the length, we know that if each of these will be two feet, in width, then it should add up to be about 10 feet, right? Two, four, six, eight, ten. 10. So we want a width of, or rather a length of 10 feet, okay? Now you have to remember that curtain wall behaves like a, a wall, okay? So when you're drawing a curtain wall, it's a line-based tool. So it's like you're drawing a line, just like a wall. You just keep going. That's how it works. So it's a little different from window assembly because window assemblies, uh, you have to host them to a wall that is already existing, but they work very similarly, all right? So we have the outer dimensions all set 13 by 10, boom, that's good. Now, if you notice, when we change the length of the wall, we only have one, two, three, four. So we need to go in and make some changes here. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is to go edit style. And when you come in here, you realize that we are on the design rules tab and everything in here looks very familiar because yes, we talk about this in that lesson, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is to create our divisions, all right? Because we do have, if we go down to divisions here, we do have the horizontal division, which we're not seeing currently because the settings in here need to be reset but the vertical ones you can see them and that's coming off of whatever is down here okay so what we want to do is to create a horizontal division that will cut at the 10 feet so let's change this from 13 to 10 feet okay and we're going to turn off this auto calculate or auto adjust if you hit okay uh, you're going to see that running across just like expected it to be. So let's go back in and let's look at the vertical uh, one. So this vertical one here, uh, it is using a three feet distance and it is also adjusting based on, uh, based on what was selected here. And if you notice the two corner uh, options were chosen. So what happens is the two end panels will be the first one to lose some dimensions well, because the length of the wall is not divisible perfectly by this dimension here. So I'm sure if we put two feet in here, that would work it out because our wall width is 10 feet long. So that should work it out where we have five equal pieces in here. Now, 
at this juncture, there are some things we could do um, to <laughs> cut the line, basically, um, or, or you know, what I would consider shortcuts. Um, and I might as well just show you guys the shorter way how to do this rather than uh, going around the bush. So what we can do here is to start using some of these modified tools, and I would encourage you guys to start using them because they are incredible if you know how to use them. And though I may not go into all the details here, I'm sure this will spark your interest and get you going. So what we want to do here is to figure out which two of these window panes we want to combine to get uh, this door, okay? So obviously it's gonna be uh, number two and number three, okay? What we can do is to turn on our infill markers. And so what that does is to show you where your infills are so that you can add different things to these infills, okay? So what you wanna do here is to go up to your infill button and merge two of these ones. So we're gonna click on merge and we're gonna click on this guy here and this one. And immediately you can see that they were merged. So now this is one infill. Now when you do something like this, it is considered an override. So you're overriding what was there. So if you go back into your edit style, you're not gonna see those changes in here. But if you go over to your override, and I'm not seeing it in here, but let me see if I go down here. Yeah, if you go down here in your properties, you'll see that you have an infill merge property in here. You can delete it if you wanted to. So if we go like that, it comes back and now you're using whatever setting you had in here. But let's go again and just merge those two together, okay? And so what we wanna do is to drop a door in here. And that's pretty easy, guys. You're not gonna believe this. <laughs> if you go to your door tool right here, as a matter of fact, let's pick a fancier door from the style browser here. So why don't we pick maybe, I don't know, one of these ones here, like a full light. Yeah, let's pick this one. So I'm gonna say add object. And pretty much you pick the infill that you want to add it to. And this applies to even if you want to add some sort of window and you know other things in here, you, you can use this very same technique. And so you would just click on the infill. You can see that it is highlighted there and uh, you just hit enter. Okay, that, that not supposed to happen. Okay, sometimes this works and other times it just freaks out. Let's try something else then, yeah? So let's go inside of our edit style here. We will go back over to design rules, go down to infills and we will create a new infill in here. So we'll call this door in fill. And uh, we will make sure that it is style based and we go down to our door and pick our door just like we did in the lesson and we're gonna hit okay. So once that is done, we can come up here and do an override. And let's pick that door, hit enter. And now we get to pick our door infill that we just created a while ago. But you need to do this. You need to remove the bottom frame. So it's gonna remove this frame right down here because you don't want it, right? So you click on that and then you hit okay. So the door is added. And so that is it really. Um, what you can do is to make your final tweaks because we do know that uh, the mullions and uh, the, the frame of the, the wall is, it needs to match the door. They need to be this, you know, whatever size you need to make them. So what you can do is come back in here and go down to frame and make sure that your frame is measuring whatever measurement you want it to be. So five by three for the mullions, I'm gonna make these five by, uh, what should I make these five by two maybe, yeah. And then I'm gonna hit okay. So you can see that those got larger and let's do a realistic view here. All right, so you can see that uh, the door is in there 
And we are going to keep the door frame in this scenario. I, I really don't know if we need to delete it, but I think we're going to keep the door frame. But what you can do is if you don't need the door frame, you could just edit the door style and, you know, make these to be zero. And that would get rid of the door frame and leave you with the, the door stop. So we're looking at the door stop there poking out, um, which it shouldn't be, but we can also adjust that. But I like the door frame, so I'm going to keep it. So the door frame aligns with the uh, with the wall, and you can see that uh, that's how that works. And again, if you wanted to add a window, you know, for argument's sake, <laughs> let's let's find a window and show you guys how this works. Um, window. Um, and I'll do awning since I think that makes the most sense here. Uh, so let's pick this awning window and you pick maybe this top infill here. It should apply. Let me see if it will apply this time. There you go. So this one worked and you would just call this window infill. Let's call it awning window infill and you would make it yeah, I don't think we need to do anything else. We'll hit OK. And you can see that it replaced it with the awning window. We probably can do the same thing here. It's going to come back up with that. We're going to hit OK. OK. So we just filled all of those with awning windows. And when you're done, you, you can go back and turn off this thing. So you know you get rid of that. And we can actually open these windows up. So let's try that. Let's make this like 30% or something like that. So you can see that those windows are now opening up and uh, maybe we should flip them to the outside, right? That makes more sense. And so we have a curtain wall system with windows and doors inside of it, guys. Awesome, and a lot of these principles do apply to doors and window assembly. In the meantime, in between time, I hope this was helpful. Let me know if you have more questions, guys. This is what we're here for, so don't be afraid to drop your questions and let me know what is what. Some zen. All right, so I'm going to just probably keep playing around with this a little bit more. Um, you know what? I'm done. <laughs>